welcome back to the channel. Uh, today is the start of installing the new solar system on our Aspen Trail 1950BH. Uh, it's a 2021 model. Uh, I We've been running uh, about 180 watts off of a cheap little uh, PWM charge controller. Nothing else in, in the mix. No battery monitoring, no nothing else. No inverter, stuff like that. With this new trailer, it has like the mini outdoor fridge that has the, or the outdoor kitchen. One second while the truck goes up by here. All right, uh, so on this trailer is it has a uh, mini outdoor kitchen with a mini bar fridge um, that only runs off of 110 volts. We always camp in the bush uh, with no services, so boondocking, dry camping, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and we'd like to have that fridge going because we found it very handy to have. Um, so uh, we went ahead and picked up a much bigger system. Uh, basically, we're going to go from a 180 watt system right now with the cheap little PWM controller to a 400 watt system with a um, MPPT controller and a uh, two kilowatt inverter, uh, battery monitoring, you know, all that. So. Well, that's basically it right there uh and so yeah this is probably going to be a multi-part video here but uh we're you know i'm going to kind of document the installation process of how i go about it i'm not uh mounting the solar panels to the roof of the trailer because we do like to park within the trees in shade we like to get the trailer in the shade uh one we don't have ac like we don't have shore power so we don't have ac uh it helps keep the trailer cooler uh, can sleep in a little later stuff like that um, and also is this way we can put the panels in the Sun wherever it happens to be uh, and we don't have to worry about how we're parking the trailer we don't need to worry about orientation whether we're facing northeast southwest whatever um, and we don't have to worry about shading uh, it also allows us to adjust the panels throughout the day to get optimal Sun hours so that's how we're going to do it. It's how we've done it with 180 watt setup, which has worked perfectly fine, but uh, wouldn't be big enough to run the, the mini fridge. So we're going for the upgrades. So I'm going to show you, I have the old system set up on the trailer right now, just charging up the batteries for me while I do the work. Uh, we got a really nice strong sun today, almost no cloud in the sky. And uh, I need the batteries topped right up to when I install the monitor to uh, calibrate it for the batteries. But I'll show you what we got here currently. So right here is we got one 100 watt panel, which we are going to reuse in this new system. Uh, and then I have two or three uh, 100 watt panels uh, made by Renogy. Uh, they're all the same voltage, 12 volt, uh, 18 nominal. Um, and then I had two 40 watt panels over there, which I'm going to repurpose those for ATV battery maintainers uh, while the while the quads are in uh, in storage. And then basically what I did was just had this little PWM uh, charge controller here, which right now you can actually see here is putting out 7.7 .7 amps to the batteries at uh let's see here and we're supplying 14.5 volts to the charge controller of course the charge controller is knocking that down to the 12 volts for the battery um or the well, actually that's 14.4 it's trying to pull the batteries up to but you know uh so yeah it's you know like this did well 7.7 .7 amps not bad and then i basically just alligator clip it right to the bank of batteries on the front of the trailer this is uh two six volt deep cycle uh batteries at a costco so and that's been the system that we have been using so uh i'll get out all the stuff that we're gonna install and, and give you a rundown on what that is and uh and also show you what we're gonna do here for this install hello so this is all the gear we're gonna be installing in the aspen trail it's we have three 100 watt Renogy solar panel sitting here and then we have the 100 watt panel that we, I've been using for a couple of years now They're all 12 volt all 100 watt. So they'll pair up quite nicely uh, We got a Renogy empowered battery monitor. Uh, I actually bought this straight off of Renogy they happen to have a sale and they uh, So it was a little cheaper than buying it say off Amazon or anything 
um, and their shipping was really quick. It was actually really fast to get that up here. Um, and then I bought a Renegy Rover uh, 40 MPPT charge controller. Um, it's going to do us very well. It's going to handle everything we need. Uh, I got it with the Bluetooth module right there as it shows and let's just open this up real quick and uh, that's it right there so it uh, says 40 amp right there and uh, the manual that comes with it is for the 20 amp 30 amp 40 amp they're all basically the same just differ on their uh, uh, the amount of solar you can hook up to them and then for an inverter we're going with the Motormaster Eliminator. Uh, I said earlier it was a two kilowatt. Uh, it's actually a one kilowatt inverter. So it should handle our minimal power needs quite well. Um, if it doesn't, we can always upgrade. Uh, further to install all this gear, you need uh, some a &L fuses or breakers, whatever you choose to go with. I initially was gonna go with the breakers and then I switched over to a &L fuses. Uh, and you need various sizes to uh, protect your various wiring sizes that you'll be using through the system. Uh, you'll need some uh, copper lugs. Uh, make sure that it says on there 100% copper, that they're not, you know, copper clad aluminum or something like that. Uh, you will need some heavy gauge wire. I end up going with uh, number one gauge. Um, the inverter itself says uh, up to 10 feet uh, in length that it would prefer uh, a number two gauge. Number one gauge is larger, I couldn't get two. Um, and we're gonna actually be below 10 feet. We should be roughly about nine feet from the batteries uh, as far as the wiring is concerned to the inverter. Um, and again, this, you want it to be pure copper. Uh, this is actually welding cable. So it is uh, multi-strand, very fine strand and it's incredibly flexible um, and if we read the cable here it's actually good for minus 50 degrees uh, Celsius is it Celsius or Fahrenheit did it say uh, Celsius so anywhere from minus 50 to a, a positive plus 105 good for up to 600 volts we're not going anywhere near that uh, what we want is the current carrying capacity um, and I picked up about 22 feet of that. This stuff is expensive, um, but it's one of the best ways to go. Uh, this wasn't too bad. This was 550 a foot. I bought 22 feet of it. Um, hopefully it's enough for all the other connections I need to make as well. Um, in order to use these uh, copper crimps, you need a crimping tool. I picked up this one right here. It's just a basic hammer crimp. You, uh, Put the lug and wire in there Set it down and basically you beat on it with a hammer and tell it's uh, solidly crimped uh, On top of that, uh, I need some wire for the Renogy uh, uh, Charge controller uh, Renogy says on their in their instruction manual the largest uh, the terminals can take is a eight uh, wire gauge so I bought eight gauge, end up having to buy 25 feet of it. Uh, and again, it is copper. The conducting material is pure copper. Um, again, no copper clad aluminum. It will work, um, but it's more brittle. It'll break easier if it's flexing. Um, and in order to carry the same amount of current, you need to go to a bigger wire gauge. Um, so pure copper is gonna be your best way to go. Um, and then various other connectors. I got a uh, connector here that goes from SAE to an MC4 connector. I need that for my original panel here because uh, it's actually got a, an SAE connector on it. So I need to convert that to MC4. Everything else is going to MC4. My previous connection used SAE on everything. Um, and that's an SAE connector. That would be the male side. And I got a female one in here. These ones um, only have the connector on one end. The other end is bare. And that is gonna be the wires I use to go from my charge controller outside of the RV to my, my uh, 
uh, solar panels and so the one end bare because it's just a uh, uh, a pinch terminal on the charge controller all right um, set of tools to pull these uh, mc4 connectors apart is handy not absolutely necessary but it will make your life a little easier um, now i am going to install these as a uh, the panels as a series parallel uh, set so two panels will be uh, uh, connected in series another two panels will be connected in series and then those two series sets will be connected parallel so here's a set of parallel connectors to connect uh, those two series parallel uh, sets uh, here's a inline mc4 fuse uh, just to protect the wiring going from the panels to the rv and then just some other various wires some extension cables so that i got lots of length to go with uh wherever i'm going to put the cable or the solar panels and stuff like that so it's various cables depending on your installation uh you will basically need to decide what you need um and all of this i went with 10 wire gauge it was basically the hot biggest i could find um it's all renergy stuff um just because they seem to have a, a good reputation and i could buy it through amazon and get air miles and stuff as, as an extra perk on top of all that you will need various wiring connections um you know if you i'm, I'm a solder and shrink uh tube kind of person heat shrink uh, so I like to solder any bare connections that I that I have. I don't like using butt connectors. They tend to fail on me, uh, especially in uh, in an environment where the wire is going to be moving and flexing a bit, which like on an RV it's going to be, or if it's uh, going to be exposed to the weather. Even when I shrink tube it, they just don't seem to hold up, the butt connectors. I don't like them. So I prefer to solder. Personal preference. Don't come at me for it. It is what it is um and then you need some strippers and uh wire strippers stuff like that um so like a, this is one of my just standard wiring bags i got all kinds of stuff in here i got wire and zip ties and and whatnot and then i got a soldering iron obviously if i like to solder and uh, and a heat gun to shrink the heat tube um i got you know set of wire cutters stripper combination things for uh smaller wires goes all up to 10 gauge uh you know stuff like that you know just various stuff and uh yeah if you do any type of wiring you're going to accumulate that stuff so you should have it on hand anyways if you don't you'll have to research into what you'll need and get that uh ordered or go to your store purchase it whatever you so that is about it um basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to figure out exactly how all this is going to fit in the rv and find out what my footprint's going to need to be um and then i'm going to cut a piece of plywood mount all this gear to that plywood so well when i say all this gear it's really just the charge controller and the inverter and the the fuses and stuff uh it's going to be mounted to that plywood so then i can just take that sheet of plywood put it in the rv mount it to the wall uh and that's about it and then uh yeah oh outside of that is all my wiring um the welding cable you couldn't get in different colors it was strictly uh it was strictly in black um and so i, I also just grabbed my eight gauge wire just in black so i didn't have to buy two rolls of wire just to get different colors so i picked up a roll of red scotch tape uh, so I can mark the ends for the positive so I can mark out my positives and the negatives can just stay bare with the block so um, that'll you know potentially help you from connecting stuff up incorrectly uh, especially if you have to you know tear it down for a repair or something in the future so that's that's pretty much it let's get to getting this stuff installed